Thank you so much for your responses. And uh, so now, um, as we all know, the Zika epidemic has reignited the discussion about women's rights and sexuality in Latin America. So in, uh, now I would like to pose a question to another of our distinguished guests, Ms. Alessandra Miller. And I would like to ask, uh, so taking into account that the global strategy positions gender equality and human rights as, as guiding principles and strive to take into account the full range of determinants of health, I would like to ask you about a very successful campaign that you coordinated uh, named Women Won't Wait. And I was wondering if you could share with us some of the achievements and the lessons learned from the campaign. I would also like to ask you, how are women organizing and mobilizing to fight against Zika? And if you could tell us a little bit about how community engagement and mobilization can be an important strategy to promote women's human rights and to hold the governments accountable. Thank you very much, Lucia. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Excellent civil society colleagues. I'd like also to start thanking uh, every woman, every child for inviting me to be here today. Um, about the Women Want to Aid campaign, we begin in 2006 and because we would like to raise attention to the fact of HIV and gender-based violence were integrated, uh, were two twin epidemics, and we'd like to bring attention to that fact. So 10 years later, uh, we are still, uh, and we are not waiting, but definitely we are still facing basically the same problems that we identified a decade ago. So because women still have to go first to the policy and then just after that to receive health care after suffering a rape, because they are still stigmatized by health sectors, uh, uh, professional communities and husbands because they are HIV, or because they are still waiting for legal safe abortion even if their uh, pregnancy are, is unwanted because it was resulted of a rape or intimate partner violence or because of they are HIV positive and don't want to have a babe. And the other side of the coin is that nowadays we still have 14 countries in the world that are uh, coercive uh, sterilizing women because they are living with HIV. So facing these situations, uh, in 2014, supported by WEN Women, we begin a project in five countries in Latin America, Brazil, Colombia, Peru, Argentina, and Uruguay. And what we found was very disrupting for us, and basically because there was no connection between uh, HIV and gender-based uh, violence uh, services, services to provide support to women who suffer violence, and especially because there was no integration between uh, key areas uh, in the governments like ministries of health, women, uh, justice, human rights, and they are just not communicated among themselves. So the result is that we have no monitoring systems in place to address the linkage between HIV and violence, and unfortunately I have no official data to share with you all uh, today uh, in this session. Uh, these results are, is very concerning because this lack of multi-sectoral responses, as Lucia mentioned in the beginning of the session, uh, it's an obstacle to the SDG implementation. If we don't increase significantly our political will resources and funding in terms of really pushing for a multi-integrated strategies and better communication among the different sectors, and we have to cover 17 sectors in the SDGs, we will not succeed. And this is exactly the moment to start thinking and discussing how can we do better for this next phase. So uh, I trust the Secretary General strategy will bring these issues to the forefront of the implementation because women cannot wait any longer. And the cost of inactions and is it will be too high for us and for everyone committed to achieve the SDGs. It's not only a women's problem. Women's problem is a world problem, and I think we need to have that in mind. So now about the, the Zika thing. Zika is another problem over women's shoulders. Brazil is under complete political and economic crisis and lacking capacity to adequately respond. There is no short-term solution, but women are taking care of themselves, their families, 
at home at this moment. But we stood up and we said, no, we will not allow anyone to say how and when we will have our children and our, when we will get pregnancy. We had that conversation 20 years ago, and we are very clear on that. So we are pushing for better access to information, contraception, repellents, and sanitation, demanding expansion, uh, expansion of the social protection for mothers and babies, and uh, also trying to expand the abortion laws so women uh, can also uh, ask for interrupting the pregnancy in the case they want. In the question of accountability, we have, uh, besides keeping our government accountable, we also need to keep the private sector accountable. And I think that the spirit of the Berta Carceres is with us today to remind us that sometimes we pay that role with our lives. And we have the capacity also to influence, more than only making our, make our governments accountable, to influence their agendas. But not always we succeed. And I'd like also to remind this audience that despite our efforts at the Haleva Task Force for ACPD, we do not have any corresponding action under the health goal. We have got, you know, violence against women and girls, but nothing that would be concretized. And in adolescents and civil society organizations are mentioned only once across the 17 and 169 uh, SDGs. To finalize, I'd like to congratulate the Secretary General leadership in placing adolescents at the front and center of your strategy at that time when many of our governments have failed to do so. It is my sincere hope that its monitoring and independent reports be utilized to inform overall monitoring and accountability of SDGs. I wish we all will have a better future from now on. Thank you. Thank you so much for that wonderful panel, great insights.